Yeah. Isn't that cool? All right, everyone. Hi, my name is Rachel Maie Yang from Sacramento, California. And today is Sunday, June 6, 2021. And I'm here with Professor B. Yang from Fresno State uh, Department of Social Work. So um, I just want to remind everybody that Project Moon Inspire, we are here to find all the inspiring Hmong men and women um, that have made an impact in our community who overcame obstacles and hurdles. And we're here to tell their stories, to share their stories, their journey of where they came from, what they've done, and what they've accomplished so far to where they are today. So thank you guys for joining us tonight. And um, I am the founder of the host of Project We Inspire, so I started this last November, and it's been going really well. I've been meeting lots of great people, and um, I hope that this uh, project and this journey will you know, allow me to meet many more people. So today again we have Professor B. Yang, and he is a full-time lecturer in the Department of Social Work at Sac State, excuse me, Fresno State. And so I just went through this timeline with, um, with Professor B. So he's been teaching in social work 18 years, since 2002, and in linguistics, Hmong language classes since 91 to 2005, uh, for 30 years. So, oh my goodness, like, <laughs> I was like, wow, you've been teaching since I was like, you know, in grade school. Um, also, I want to highlight that Professor B. Yang has been a leader of our Hmong culture practices for 20 years. He's been a recipient of the 2019 Hmong Natural Development Impact Award, and in September 2019, he has been uh, acknowledged and honored for his long-standing work as a recipient of Fresno State's Distinguished 2019 Top Dog Alumni Award from the College of Health and Human Services. And this is to recognize all his contributions to education, the field of social work, and the Hmong community. So, um, all the great things that Fresno B has done, welcome to our Project Moon Inspire. I wanted to make it short, but I wanted to make sure that everybody knows who Professor B is. To me, Professor B Yang is my uncle, and uh, he's always been a role model of mine. Um, for those of you who don't know or maybe know, uh, he is um, a huge part of our uh, shaman uh, Hmong cultural uh, ritual, and he um, led my dad's funeral eight, nine years ago. So, um, you know, now I, you know, definitely want to get to know him a little bit more because all the things he knows about our culture. So, welcome, Uncle B, Professor B. <laughs> Thank you, Bangley. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it just a uh, little correction there. Uh, the the proper title that I have at Fresno State because I don't have my PhD. Mm -hmm. So they call me full time lecturer. That's oh. what the uh, correct title and the uh, status in the university. But people people become a doctor, professor, yeah. doesn't matter. I correct people, people say, no, 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 no. You are the actual doctor. <laughs> and so we just part of what I do, uh, the passion that I have for the community and for who I am and what I belong to. And I think that, that it's what it's been touching and showing people around whatever that I go. And so people kind of remember me, uh, not exactly what I said, but sometimes probably exactly what I did and how people feel about it. And so they can never remember me. But thank you for my e for invite for your inspired project. And I hope that I uh, will not scare anybody out, but hopefully <laughs> will inspire somebody. Yes. You do a wonderful job with this project. Thank you. I know that our younger generation in the future will need much of growth, so thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here to speak to you and uh, just let you guys know that, uh, uh, you know, instructor, why is it Professor B? Oh, B. We're in the middle of a actual um, long uh, funeral ritual, and so he has uh, been kind enough to. Um, take time out of the uh, ceremony because there is a small break now for uh, you know us to talk about this so uh, about this journey. So let's start from the beginning and uh, I'm going to ask you just a few questions. You know, where were you born? How many siblings do you have? And when did you come to the U.S.? I was born in Sinkong Province and I was born during the Vietnam War, the early phase of Vietnam War. Um, 
which is my dad don't know because we in the village and we don't have school and, and nothing. So mm -hmm. uh, when you ask my mom and mom say, oh, you were going to start with this and also winter. <laughs> and so they say, oh, no, it's when we do John Blake. They say, no, no, it's when we play the job of yeah. So you get all that kind of complex story. It's yeah. like everybody else. Yeah. So I, I don't know about birthday, but um, the birthday that before to America that we had to pick it up, because all those parents, including some of your family members, going to America, birthday is one of the criteria. Mm -hmm. Any parent in the room you can't, you don't know your kid's birthday, mm -hmm. you did not get to go to America. Mm -hmm. And so part of the survival, survival that a lot of parents put their family or their, their children the same month, the same day, just different years, so they remember. But in my case, my mama didn't, didn't do that. So I was born in St. Kong. Uh, uh, and, and so I have seven brothers and seven sisters, seven brothers including me. So I have six brothers with me and then seven and then my other uh, seven sister. Uh, unfortunately, during the Vietnam War and right after the Vietnam War, I lost about three sisters uh, mm -hmm. because part of the uh, uh, activist CIA involvement in the Hmong community, the Hmong villages at the time, and so, fortunately, that all my seven brothers, including my seven brother, my six brother, we're all here. Mm -hmm. And my four sister that was alive, we're also here. Mm -hmm. And so both of my parents, we're all here. But part of this uh, recording, I want to honor my mom that uh, she passed away last August. Mm -hmm. And so now we still, as a family, we still uh, Working in the grieving process with my mom and her her uh, her gradually into my you know how, how she raises yes, how she as a yes, mother that yeah. she be that for that so um, that is about that coming to America uh, right after 1975 uh, then our villages uh, particularly about two three villages together we got captured by the new regime the communists right in the end of 1975. So then we were sent to re-education camp back in Chinese Saint mm -hmm. uh, in, in the border of Saint Kong in, in uh, Vietnam, in North Vietnam. And so we were there, so we really deep into the uh, Vietnam side of Laos and Vietnam border. So in other words, uh, part of the re-education camp so that people cannot go cross country to Canada. And so we had to stay there, uh, the whole people, the whole village had to stay there, uh, pay the low key until 1980. Mm -hmm. So 1983, that is when I escaped out of the country with a group of eight people. And me and one of, me and one or two, two of our members, including me, we are the youngest and the smallest of the team that we're trying to cross country from St. Paul to, to the village team in Berlin. So I came to River Chikim in very night in about, uh, I think it was uh, October uh, in 1983. And in 1983, February of 1983 is the last day that any River Chikim that the United Nations would issue the legal status. So in other words, when I came to River Chikim in 1983 in, in August, in October, I have no legal documentation. So I became an illegal refugee oh, wow. in the refugee camp. And then a year later on, in 95, my friend caught up with me in Thailand, but they went to the new camp, or the new arrival, mm -hmm. which is Chin Kham Camp. Mm -hmm. And so in 1985, I reunited with my friend with program open. So I had to reunite my parents in 1985 uh, in, in Chin Kham Camp, the new refugee camp. So 1986, luckily my dad passed all the question, all the interview process uh, by the United Nations Refugee Commissioner. Mm -hmm. And then that is when we get a chance to move into the transit center, it's called Panamacom uh, Transit Center. Mm -hmm. And we had to go in that particular six men learning about American culture before going to America. Uh, and so we're a little bit basic, yeah. We're a little bit basic like a water foot of the light, go to shopping, they give us fake money, rob with chicken, so we have to go to shopping, the old budget. And this is occurring in the camp? Yes. 
So they're teaching you yes. the, the everyday life of America yes. and the U.S. And I remember the Jew walking. I remember, and this is a lot wow. of horrible story that the first wow. mom came to America and the story like America have no salt, they all sugar, mm -hmm. they have no blanket because the way how they made the bed really nice. Yeah. So we got a horrible story. Wow. But it's a very good preparation for us to come. Yes. And yes. the reason they create that consortium culture program for the new community in Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. not only mom, but uh, because the first group, the first way they came to America and how great program that they never expect of it. Oh. And so my cycle, that the, the, the cycle, the group that came through that trans center to get training, mm -hmm. it's called cycle. So that each group that came through like a core, they call cycle. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, my cycle is a cycle 51. So there will be 50 group before me right. that get all this training before going to America. Right, right. And so uh, that training, it, it's very most important uh, uh, training that preparation of the Fiji Commission to America. Wow. So, 1986, mm -hmm. in September 4th, I came right into France now mm -hmm. uh, because my aunt, my, my dad's sister, mm -hmm. who was sponsored for us, my family, and he, she worked in France now. And so, thank you for my auntie, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Port Song Ya, and then one of my uh, cousin, Dila uh, Yanai, mm -hmm. and then they are the one that sponsor us to uh, and so we owe a lot of uh, uh, death or, or, or yeah. uh, you know appreciation yes. or anything that we can do uh, yeah. to to our sponsor. Yeah. And so so it, it's it's a very long journey. But yeah. like in this country, uh, according to the age that my dad had for me, I was about. I think I was about three minutes or one minute away from my 18th birthday. Mm -hmm. So I took the to high school. Because oh. I couldn't come from the law when you're over 18, you can. And I have my own welfare caseload. I became, I became an independent. So mm -hmm. I have my own welfare caseload. I received yeah. welfare uh, yeah. uh, cash aid for staff. Yeah. And I have my own caseworker. I went with my caseworker with a Vietnamese lady. Mm -hmm. And when I tried to go talk to her that I need to go back to school, she won't allow me to because part of the mm. policy and, yeah. and I was fighting to go back into high school and so yes. we have a great experience. So uh, I wanted to ask you then, you know, while you're in this journey of learning about America and coming here, um, what were some of your worst fears and biggest challenges? Because, you know, there's, there's those of us, and then I'm going to admit, who were born here. And uh, absolutely, it's a privilege because you know we, we hear all the stories of how it was a struggle to flee a country that was being taken on by communism. And you know, my mom tells a story about swimming through the river and living in those camps. Uh, what were your biggest fears and biggest challenges that you felt during this journey? What I can only imagine was like. But can you tell us what I mean? You were separated from your family for a, a couple of years. So uh, you were what, 16? Uh, I don't remember, 14, 16. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. you were a teenager. Right. And, uh, and then I became homeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and illegal. Uh, and basically, I have no sense of belonging. And then, so my challenging my me is the night before I depart from my family. Mm. You know, because at that time, any kids in the village, any teenager, as long as they grow up, they can walk, they can move on, yeah. they will find a way to go to Thailand. Yeah. And wow. it's many ways that in a Thailand, number one, uh, you go out there, better life, education, mm -hmm. chance to go to America. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's a non destination. Oh. You can either get out there alive, yeah. or you get out there. Not alive, yeah, and yeah. you're not. Wow. And because it's so much unknown, that so many people down the way, that so many anything can happen to you. Mm -hmm. uh, then I remember I asked my mom and dad that I really go to Burbuji, get out to Thailand. And they never approved. Hmm. They never approved. But what I did, I I, I just did myself. Uh, I get the rice from we can play. Mm -hmm. I go play that by myself. I got all the rice. Yeah, yeah. I stay my preparation, my whole food and the journey. Mm -hmm. And you have to skip the rice in the first few months of Yeah. And then you push your chandu to dry it and dry rice. Right, right. And then when you recook it, mm -hmm. it expansion. 
the, the, oh. the expansion much bigger. Wow. And so all those other things I I I, I fire away. So yeah. my basket, my bag, you have my bag, yeah. it's just like a soldier's bag. I'm oh. on gun, I'm on burning, I'm on knife, wow. I'm a cooking pot. And you think about a team. Mm-hmm. One time and in the night that before I left them. And, and I, we all cry silently, once in silently. We just can't process it. Yeah. So mom go out on that night to go back to, to, to get her best chicken. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the uh, the chicken that they had here. Well, no, mm-hmm. but because I'm leaving and, and the silent thing is that how do we know we're going to see each other again? Right, right. And so she went back to the best book. I did not, it's like a last meal kind of wow. thing. I'm spoken. But you know that it's like a last minute. Mm-hmm. That you, you don't know what's going to yes, happen. That you never know oh, what's going to happen. Wow. And That's I know scary. between me and mom and dad, uh, the younger brother, because mm-hmm. I'm the oldest, they, they, don't, they don't really feel it. Mm-hmm. But between the three of us, we couldn't really enjoy that thing at that mm-hmm. Because we all know that it's a no. Mm-hmm. And it's a dinner that it can be the last one. Yeah. Yeah. And so everybody cannot get that interest. And so mm-hmm. it's really important. And then from there, when we left, like I said, I'm one of the smallest members in the group, mm-hmm. the three of us. And because the other two, they have their father, they have their uh, older uh, brother with them, mm-hmm. and I'm the one that don't have anybody. Yeah. So when we have, we run to a crisis, mm-hmm. like a chase by the border patrol, mm-hmm. I'm the one that they let them off. I have to find my way out. Wow. And for them, they let somebody to hold it and put out through the jungle. Mm-hmm. But for me, I'm the jungle. So at one point we got chased by the um, uh, border patrol and the, the soldier, yep. and we tried to jump a, a fresh, a fresh flood canal. It's a huge stone that just passed, and huge fresh flood that came out. And I, I jumped. I too small. My back was so heavy. I'm so tired because it went for so long. I couldn't get to the other side. When I jumped, I got right in the middle of the river. Oh! And then I was, you know, swimming by. And that's what by the, uh, the river in yeah. Dry Creek into about, oh, I think right about 30, 20 feet down there that I would be able to grab it. Say, right, it's three o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm able to grab one of the uh, grass, the long grass, the wood, and then I just pull oh, yourself out, out too. Wow. So things like that, you just like, wow. I'll make sure, sorry about that. It's okay. So make sure it's a little closer, so just in case, but. Wow, so I'm following you through this journey of being by yourself, being a teenager between 14 to 16, carrying, like you said, a backpack full of food, yeah. a rifle, just like a soldier. Mm-hmm. And then you're going through the jungle. And my rifle right? is not really a rifle oh. because I'm small. And then we have, a, you know, the M16 of those rifle to get the bigger kid. Mm-hmm. So my rifle, it's called one of the, uh, they call the bigger gun, it's called the bazooka. Oh. The one that shoot the tank. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I But I have no tool that I'm opening the hand and carrying the hand. Oh. So it's like a, now you think, how are you just say, what are you doing? How are you and, carrying the And what are you doing? I have no tool how to use that weapon. Wow. Because I have full gurney. I was so tiny. Yeah. That full gurney who started at one point, yeah. they wrap around my west. It's just like, Wow. I don't know how to I, operate that unit either. I don't even know. I, that's the thing is, all, every single person's journey from, from you know, the cat well, from the jungle, yes. you know, just through the river, everything, or, or canal, like you, like you said, it, it just, it's just so scary. When I imagine it like a, like a movie, like it's unreal, but it's real. So. Moving on forward a little bit, thank you for sharing that, is despite these fears of the unknown, these challenges that you might not make it through the jungle or make it through the refugee camp, go through this uh, South Park crash course of the U.S., um, you know, customs or whatever, um, you managed to get your high school diploma, mm-hmm. go to Fresno City College, major in uh, psychology first, and then transfer to Fresno State College in 91. And my biggest question to you is, what motivated you the most to obtain your high school diploma? You know, I mean, yes, you went to all the college and everything, but um, being an adult, like you said, 18, and then, um, because I saw my dad go through 
high school, being an adult learner, it's difficult. It's already difficult being a, in, a first generation born here, <laughs> you know. But being a, you know, having that you you, were, you came here as an eighteen year old adult, uh, English is your second language. Uh, what motivated pushed you to pursue the high school diploma? You know that go right back into the reason I left my behind and my, my parents behind and that's not back in eighty three. For somehow I have this inner drive mm -hmm. of education. Mm -hmm. And mom lived in a village that you have for mountain block, north, south, and east and west. Mm -hmm. You don't see any outside beyond those mountains that you can see. Mm -hmm. But somehow I always have that drive for education. Mm -hmm. So in Laos I have no idea but somehow I thought that if I can go get education, mm -hmm. that would be something that I satisfy with. Mm -hmm. And so when I get to Windows G10, I studied loud really hard. I studied mm -hmm. mom really hard. Mm -hmm. I did not have money to go pay for English because English mostly is a, a, a private school. Yeah, yeah. So in the Windows my homeless, I don't have anybody in the United States to send me support. So I'm pretty much just basically learn a little bit about Lao and learn a little bit about uh, uh, mom, how mm -hmm. to play mom. Now, coming to America, mm -hmm. I know that my I had my 18th birthday when I got here, mm -hmm. I had my own separate welfare case. Mm -hmm. And they sent me to that school mm -hmm. for the first year. Yeah. And in the first three months, I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. I feel like younger, I feel that when you go to you. Mm -hmm. At first of all, school, we have that little kind of school right there. Mm -hmm. At that school over here. So one day I told my I went to the principal and the newcomer school. I told them I, I, I use a tutor, Mr. Van Kua, who now in Fresno, mm -hmm. really helpful and really appreciate for his help, his services. He was the liaison at the school at the time. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, Mr. Van, can you tell the principal that I'm not 18, I'm not 16? Mm -hmm. And I need to go back to high school. Mm -hmm. And so when the principal looked at me, he said, You know, be you really, really want to go to high school, I can sign up. Don't change your birthday though. <laughs> I signed you off to go to high school, right. but right. don't change your ID, anything. Mm -hmm. And but you better make it. I remember he told me, so that was very uh. me. So, right in the middle of 87, he signed off. Wow. I came right back into Hugo High School. Yeah, when I came to Hugo High School. Uh, I I took the opportunity at the ABC. Mm -hmm. I studied so me, my second brother, my third brother were the same way. Wow. So I went to run the first four triplets. My ESL teacher, mm -hmm. oh and Mr. Petrosian, always said every time we were walking through the line of the door, oh he had climbed the triplets. <laughs> I said, What's it what's a triplet? Mr. Petrosian said, You're not a triplet? I said, no, I'm not true. Yeah. And so he explained triplets to me. Yeah. And he said, well, you got the same grade, you must be the same age. Mm -hmm. You used to have, they don't know how much strength it is. Mm -hmm. Because of that, that I, I told myself, I said, well, I have two brothers with me. So I compete with them. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm forward. Yeah. I suppose if they had a responsibility to be the role model mm -hmm. and be the big brother. Yeah. I got to fight. I got to step right off. I went to graduate in my junior year since the senior year. Wow. So I went to my counselor, Mr. Christensen, in Uber, I said, I want to do that. He said, what you can do, you can take regular six high school class, mm -hmm. you can take four other classes outside, mm -hmm. then you can pay that graduate. Mm -hmm. So he found program at that school, different program, mm -hmm. and then no stop program. So I take that outside of that, and I class my regular six classes. Wow. I went to graduate in my junior year. So you're basically saying one year. Yeah. Full dedication of classes in school, right. outside, outside of school. school, and work at the most popular center as a city park. Wow. Recreation leader. And wow. so, so I managed that at the same time I learned NDC, at the same time I learned math, mm -hmm. and my back, I remember my back was so huge. And yeah. I hate the law school because I never know how to work that combination. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. I let everything. <laughs> so I never put my thing in my so mouth. You carried I carried everything. You carried everything. And the mom, your mom kid at that time, they did well off of the younger than us. In that time, back in the 80s and the 70s, the 90s, mm -hmm. people really micro dressing style. Yes, yes. Bigger, yeah. all that. And they, they still pretty much like a punk style kind of thing. <laughs> and they call me, they say, they call me MTT. 
he yeah. and they say, look, oh, this guy just put all the phone book in his backpack. He never put in the uh, log book. I don't care. Yeah. Because so you knew that I that locker was right. Yes. So you're like you're like, okay, yes. if I mess around this locker, yes. I'm gonna be late. Right. And I don't I don't need that. Yeah, I'm gonna get into that. I don't want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. Wow. So I wanted to do that. But every moment I took my brother and managed to get to the library, mm -hmm. the high school library before it opened. Wow. I tried to stay there until it closed. Yeah. And I didn't know I didn't know detention, right? Yeah. So in my PE class. My, my, my best classmate, Kavi mm -hmm. was telling me, and he, he saw me search detention for about two months, three months. Mm -hmm. He said, you were in search detention. I said, what's detention? Yeah. All those bad kids that kept out school and the penalty, they had to go do their homework. I said, no, no, no. I thought they were helping me yeah. to do my homework. So <laughs> there's another guy named B. Yang in the school, and he was very active in gang. Yeah. So he cut his class all the time. Yeah. And they, the school sent his detention to me every week. Wow. But I studied his detention for about three months. Because of because the I know nothing about this recipe. So you just thought you were doing homework right. at the library. Because when you go to the cafeteria, that's what the others and put the other supervisor helping you out. Right, right, so right. I took that advantage. <laughs> and I did all the homework and until Kyle told me about it, no, that's not helpful. <laughs> that you love that kid. <laughs> so uh, that very day the the uh, the attendant office served another division in PE class. Mm -hmm. Plus, I used to return to the office. I brought it, I went to the office. I talked, they get so, the, the uh, attendant office gets so much used to me, they say, So now you're trying to be smart, huh? <laughs> I, said, oh. I said, No, 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 hold on. You look at my name. Yes. Period two, I don't have English. Mm. I have Spanish. Mm. I don't have Mrs. White, I have Mrs. Meyer. Mm -hmm. And then they look at it and it's like, Oh, you're right. The type of the computer that's eight different B's in the computer. Wow. I said, so which one are you? I said, I don't know. <laughs> well, three different B names. Wow. And then now you have the other B E A, uh, mm -hmm. spelling. Right. And so I said, I don't know. So that would go find a brain to connect me. And mm -hmm. that's what they said, my counselor said. And then last semester, I happened to have 4.0. I was so excited. <laughs> but I got a note from the superintendent of the principal saying, yeah. tell my dad saying that. Uh, he had to look into it for me, otherwise you're gonna kick me out of school okay. because my GPA was 1.07. And I forgot. And it doesn't make sense to me. So I thought oh, to my person, my, my counselor, we went to the principal, they look at my records, and then they found out that that was the other B. That yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. So then I gave the study detention, I paid his library to the law, and because and one day we wow. walk by each other right the light in front of the library. Yeah, yeah. He pours his ID, says, is that your address? Yeah. I said, yeah. <laughs> and I look at my ID, and I had what the, well, the school did, they print his address oh. to my ID, oh. and they print my address to his ID. Wow. So he's, he's really he's a, he said, oh, so you really should my detention pay my book, huh? Mm -hmm. And he just laughed at me. He had bone here, he just laughed at yeah. me. He, he just said, thank you. He so to out. the VA. <laughs> My uncle B. A. <laughs> served all your detention, paid all your library dues. So in a way, you know, you advocated for yourself, right. and then you had to clarify your records, right. clear your records, right. and what take your dad to go and talk to the principal because they were deciding if you were gonna be a one point oh student right. or a four point oh student, but right. you were the four point oh student. Right. Now that is some story to to, to no. I think to share because. And you talk yes. about advocacy. If, yeah. if, if you know, a lot of students in those days, mm -hmm. they don't have the ability to yeah. advocate for themselves. Right, right. And they they just go with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of record, if you really look at statistics, mm -hmm. if there are high percentage of prison populations not belong to the prison. That's right. Because of all of this mm -hmm. data that's yeah. not up and up into the prison. Yeah. And, and so every time I go to yeah, every time I go to give a financial check of prison state when I was a student, yeah, that was wrote Watch for another bee <laughs> because <laughs> now we get so much trouble by the day. So I'm going to be the human being, I'm going to be the human being. Yeah, yeah. And then one day, I, my, because I was major in psychology when I transferred to the first stage, yeah. one day I came back to class and my professor was sitting in front of me and said, oh. I thought you were dead. Last time, I got the bee, they supposed to kill bee right at the oh. door, they bring the doorbell and they kill bee. All I heard was bee, then or bee, then I thought it was you, oh. and now you're here. 
Wow. I know that we run to the car as President said, call it the, mm -hmm. the real road. I mean, he, he couldn't make it, and so he got the accident and he died. Mm -hmm. That's what thought about to me. It was mm -hmm. my, my colleague, what I'm teaching already, wow. one of my colleagues, however, the being that had domestic violence, killed his wife, came inside with two kids in Minnesota, and he thought was me. And when, wow. I got, when I got to work, she was crying. She said, Oh, who's so wife? I thought that we. Lord, you so much that now. <laughs> oh God! So you're always yeah. mistaken for uh, being for not doing yeah. well in school, and you were mistaken for a person who got killed, right, yeah. and then you were mistaken to be in a domestic violence right, situation right, right. Of, of killing yourself. Oh my goodness! So my next question then is: During this time, did you have a role model or a mentor or people that supported you? During it's this funny time? that they asked that. Any success person yeah. had to have a model somewhere. Yes. Yeah. And I've been looking for model at my time. Mm -hmm. The only high at model model that I heard of mm -hmm. that it clicked on my 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 in, my inner side mm -hmm. was Dr. Yang Yeah. I mm -hmm. never saw Dr. Yang Yang. Oh only heard of me. Yeah. I have an uncle, Du mm -hmm. Ye, who also went to France back I think in the 70s mm -hmm. in 73 he went to 73 and the way when they when the country uh, came over 75, he just lived there. Mm -hmm. And he his graduation when I was in Wood Camp, Uncle Duke was picture that he sent to his family mm -hmm. that he was way up in the Buddha Stadium oh. and received his master's degree in physics. Yeah. And when I saw all those pictures, it inspired me. Wow. That and that I hang one of his pictures in my office. That I, I want to be like that so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think that when you have inside ins uh, inspiration, mm -hmm. you have to have that drive mm -hmm. in order for success. Yeah. So coming through college, it's not that easy. So difficult for me. I stay 24 seven. I live my life through the center. Yeah, I, I saw and that. So many things that I overcome that you know. In fact, in a writing essay, many of my assignments I did that great. And I made it. Speakers, you yeah, know. Yeah. The reason because I work in the tutor, my assignment, my I had to revise two, three times before I turn it in. Right, right. And so that is something that I work, and so mm -hmm. it's it's a very challenging. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you mentioning being in the tutoring center. This is something for students or future college students, right? And I and I've had experience with this too because I've been to college and. Um, it's so important to utilize the tutoring center, yes. the writing lab, and the library. And you wrote here, or you shared in the article, that you spend many hours in these three places. And you became kind of disconnected with the community, um, but you still forged through, right? So what made you feel this disconnection, even though you were studying so hard, in these three places, the student center, the writing lab, and the library. You know, uh, what, what made you disconnect with, with your community? And even you even mentioned about not even connecting with psychology as a major. So, uh, can you share a little bit about that journey? You know, I, in high school, that's always life at the Korea Center. Mm -hmm. And I was going to the Korea Center and I pull out different majors that how much money you make out of each year <laughs> and where the job located, <laughs> right? And then, yeah. and then I, I look at that all the time. Mm -hmm. I want to be teacher so much. Yeah. But when I start my English class, my English class, I have one teacher that the whole kids totally disrespected that. Mm -hmm. the, that teacher is really play low key, very soft spoken, uh, really flexibility, really kind. Mm -hmm. And I saw students take advantage of him. You know, any second that he hang out, mm -hmm. a lot of students just roll out in the ball, throw at him. Oh. And all this kind of thing. And I thought, man, I'm a little known guy, shorty guy. <laughs> the guy, if I become teacher, all the stick that throw me in trash. Mm -hmm. And I got really scared. Oh. So I get away from the teacher. That's why I didn't choose maybe just psychology. Mm -hmm. Why would you see the college to really interesting, take regular psychology general kind of classes to really interesting? Mm -hmm. But when I get to Fresno State, Mm -hmm. I get to the upper D division courses mm -hmm. that are much more specific to science. Mm -hmm. I fall behind. Oh, because okay. I, now I cannot translate English to mom. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. For example, mental health, I can't translate anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, psychosophrenia, I cannot translate anymore. Right. Phobia, I cannot translate anymore. Mm -hmm. And then now I learn on the abnormal psychology that now you start to become a label person. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, this person has this busy discipline. Mm -hmm. And that stays that person for the rest of their life. And talk about the symptoms right. and the medications. Right, and right. It gets very, very complicated. And then there's a stigma with that particular there person is. that I label. Mean. So when I look at that, I look at all the two, I say, so how can I trust the two? Mm -hmm. Who built this two to say, oh, this person has ADHD, or this person has that. So when I get into that, it just freed me out. Mm -hmm. And the most thing is that I cannot connect it anymore because I can't translate because my anger was so low. Mm -hmm. at, that, that time, at that time. At that time. That I couldn't even understand mm -hmm. what is this meaning of. Yes. So yes. if anything, you really look at learning, you, Research. If you cannot translate from one language, you're native to the uh, the language to your native. That a lot of times not with you. Mm -hmm. And so, at mm -hmm. that time, then that, that is what I struggle. So, mm -hmm. I I barely make it to two point of GP at first stage. Wow. Any mistake, I got kicked out. Wow. So I very careful. And so <laughs> one day, I have a grandpa who now is doctor, <laughs> doctor for long, and I was really really appreciative for him. I, I shared that my experience with him. He said, Wow, you should go check the sugar. Yeah. Uh, go talk to Dr. Sosgaver, who are my advisor. Yeah. And I went to talk to Dr. Sosgaver, and thank you for Dr. Sosgaver that mm -hmm. he just looked at me. He said, Tell me what you do at home mm -hmm. and, and besides school. I said, Well, I was a president of the uh, YPPU, mm -hmm. and I run this, run that. Mm -hmm. You know, I a church, I'm the lead song singer, mm -hmm. I run you through the church. Mm -hmm. At home, I run on the uh, president of the YPP Youth in Fresno, mm -hmm. and I run that. Um, we have the national, international group. Yeah. And so after I taught in school, I was a president at the Long Street Organization of Fresno City College. I was officer here at the Fresno State. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, you have that natural social worker. What do you need your social worker? Uh -huh. And I thought, he said, why did I change? Ever said, I, 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 I got Everything it. makes sense. Right, everything makes sense. Yeah. I went connected and I think I built a big beat. Yeah. And so I'd be able to move out that. I'd be able to, I'd be able to make that world really improve. Yeah. So because of that, uh -huh. I never thought I'm going to get my bachelor. I never thought I'm going to get my wow. master. Wow. And right after I got that, when I get very good, then I get the master program. I was so happy. Uh, Going back to the master program. In fact, I was doing so great in the social work program that they nominated for the medalists. Oh, and so uh, they only call me, the school only called me say, you are a the medalist. Mm -hmm. And later on, the week after that, they call me back and say, we have a politic point uh, argument, and I think that they switch you. Oh. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just a lot of things going on, but uh, I think my struggle there is, it's, and then the community piece, somehow when I look at it, I was so hard at school. Mm -hmm. But whatever I know, I pull my center with me. Um, like when I live in an American family in the church, mm -hmm. in the church, uh, uh, the elderly in the church said, So what do you need? You're so new to this country. Mm -hmm. I said, Can you quit the study hall? Mm -hmm. And so I can take all my sibling, all my cousin here. Mm -hmm. You can have some elderly volunteer. We can spend full 30 minutes to do homework. You two that we spent 30 minutes to study the Bible wow. and sing a song. And the church took on my offer. The yeah. lot of elderly came to the church every day. They were sending about two or three cars to Google to pick up us right after high school wow. to 50 to 59, 58. We go right to study hall, mm -hmm. we cook, eat, juice, we, <laughs> we go there, we took the break, yeah. we do acting list, and we sing a song, we, we Study Bible, mm -hmm. then we turn around, make sure all oh, homework get done. Yeah. Wow. And, and now, yeah. I think it's the whole benefit. Yeah. And so all my that was a natural yeah. study hall session and right now. Because of that, and all my work, all my siblings were able to get a high education degree. Wow. And we were able to pass the BS and test at the time. At the time, the most challenging for new to Virginia kids mm -hmm. is to pass the high school test, right. which is called the BS and test. Mm -hmm. We were really challenged. Wow, that's so amazing because sometimes by just advocating and, and meeting the right people, in your case,
going to meet with this uh, academic advisor and having, uh, like I said, a grandpa who is now a doctor, mm -hmm. um, just telling you, hey, maybe maybe it's time to switch. switch, you know? And that's, I think, a lot of students struggle. Right. Is switching, having the courage to switch from one major right. to the other and then finding their niche. That's really hard, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I love this quote that you said in the article, uh, and you said, I tell my students that I didn't find social work, it found me. Right. That's very touching because it's not every day that, um, you know, an instructor, professor, or a person can say, you know what, it's the it's a field that actually found me. And I I felt like that's where I belong. So so I think this is a great a great conclusion, a great um, I guess his statement to say because it really shows that you know social work is your home, right? You're your study. And so, um, what do you say to students that let's say they don't find a connection with anything, and, and, you, and you said social work found you? What what can you advise them if they're coming along? And, and, and that came out, kind of hit me in the middle <laughs> on my professionalism yeah. as advising. I can work advisor, right? So I have a lot of students come to me and say, I don't know what to major. Mm -hmm. Can you advise me something? Mm -hmm. And I told all my students, I said, okay, the regular university or United States advisor for you, advising for you for major is whatever you're good at, mm -hmm. find out your passion, whatever you're right. good at, whatever yeah. you like to do, go there. Yeah. So that can be anything. Yeah. But we want you to find out that. Mm -hmm. Not be fine for you. Mm -hmm. But now since you are a mom student, or so let's say you're a minority student, yeah. then you need to, there's another sign that onto this major. Yeah. And the reason is this, when I was in school, I went to Francis, I had a lot of friends, a lot of friends in Francis, a Vietnamese friend. At that time, in the very early in the 80s and the 90s, a lot of Asian students major to civil engineering. Mm -hmm. They go to engineer a lot, mm -hmm. because they're good at math. And they, when they graduate, I said, they got a great job. I saw an elderly friend, an older friend, who all, they graduate from civil engineer, chemical engineer, they get job like in Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, LA. Yeah. And when they, before they get married, they can go two, three people live in one apartment mm -hmm. and they can make it. Mm -hmm. But when I person about five years, three years down the road, I found that I come back in my mom's life, and I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? <laughs> and I, this, this is my, my, my old friend, my mom, or student, yeah. Yeah. my mentor would tell me, oh, Tell you mm. when we graduate, mm -hmm. we get job in LA, four five us live with a bombing, great. Mm -hmm. But we start to marry. Oh, that was the sad way. That we barely make it because the rent was so, so high. Yes. And not only that, when we had one child, mm -hmm. we find out ourselves to come home because our parents are friends now. Mm -hmm. We come home from months and mm -hmm. But when we have three, four children, mm -hmm. we find ourselves come home every week. And then now we don't have a job. Our job is not here. Yeah. So now I come back to look at my old job, my tutor, my liaison at school, and my principal said, "Well, I'll have sixty more years mm -hmm. to become a teacher." Oh. Well, no, you go back to get your credential. Yeah. That's why I'm back in your class. Oh. Wow. So this story is because now my kid gets I have to call my mom, and my mom said, "Oh, they would take the ball." <laughs> So I think that he's so mad. It's time he would. So my point, that point is, my point to my student is, so who are you? Mm -hmm. Besides what you're good at, right. what do you like to do? Do you know who are you? Mm -hmm. Are you able to be like a white kid that can grab your parent living? You can go graduate in New York and stay in New York. That doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. You can survive. Mm -hmm. Then go for it. But if you are the kid that got you talking to what's up, how you do it, you miss no, you miss my mom with the chicken, barbecue. You miss your brother's sister, you miss your brother, you have to be there. And then, if you are that individual, then you need to stay with that. I think you need to get a job with your family, yes. You need to get a job with more people, yes. Then that will draw you a clue. To find out if that you were you are that kid, then you need to find out what job available in that area. Yeah. So another one, if you are that kid, then more likely that 
Fresno, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. The Fresno, most of the job, it's service job. Mm -hmm. You're a teacher, social mm -hmm. worker, police. Counseling. Counseling. Yeah. Yeah, you have to those skills. Yeah. You cannot be engineer, because engineer would have done it. Yeah. Very well. Yes. Right? Yes. And so, and those are the kind of advice that I give the kids, and they, they'll look at me like, we didn't think that way. Yeah. I said, I didn't think that way too. Yeah. And yeah. to my next, to come back to my class. Yeah. And they told me the story. Mm -hmm. But if you are regular, you are mainstream student, I won't share with you. I yeah. just said, what are you good at? Mm -hmm. Go from that. Yeah. But if you are mom dad, I said, so who are you? Do you know who you are? Yes. Because like earlier you said, the older that you get, mm -hmm. the closer you can move back to your community that you want. Yes. And you connect more with your own yes. people, your community, yes. your siblings. Yes. Um, and um, it's it's sort of the kind of opposite of an American uh, white family, oh, yes. which I grew up in, where they say, no, you, you need to go to, like you said, New York, the Bay Area, or um, Florida, wherever, you know, to get that civil engineering job or uh, whatever job is available, but then when you're community oriented and you grew up in, yes. I call it like a village <laughs> of your of your own people, um, you need that sense of a mind. Well, I and mean, that's where Mark Italy and the Mark which will have a very nice poem saying, when you close door, it's one family, mm -hmm. but when you open door, it's the whole village. Yeah. So that phrase, what he said is that you need to be in Hmong community, it's always us, mm -hmm. it's not I. Mm -hmm. Which is the mainstream community, it's always I, I. me first. Yeah, not us, not we. us, we. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if any kids miss between this two, they will run to what we call professional crisis. Mm -hmm. They can't find their identity. Mm -hmm. They can't find their professional development identity, and they'll run to crisis. Mm -hmm. And so most of this were our booze. In the what we call midlife crisis, yes. and they're running to work with the in law, <laughs> the husband, the wife, the sibling, the kid, yeah. and then they'll get the run out boots out there somewhere. That's so true. We're all human beings. Yeah, yeah, we are. And part of this is a human behavior. Mm -hmm. If you study Freud, you study PJ, you study mm -hmm. Erickson, mm -hmm. human behavior, all this is there. Yeah, it is. That if you forget your stake in your childhood life, you will come back to play before you die. <laughs> You see that? You have to come back. This is a natural reaction to go back when you start. Right. Yes. And so all this, it's it's there. So now I teach, I first and second, I teach cultural diversity of Russia. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Part of the pillar of cultural awareness, mm -hmm. number one, you need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. Number two, you need to know, and if, before you know who you are, you cannot pretend like you know how. Yeah. And so our very first assignment, is we call it cultural autobiography. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, we ask you to go write about your parents, yes. write about who you are. Yeah. You need to interview your mom and your dad. Mm -hmm. And so that you know who you are, you know your story, your mom's you know story, and you know your dad's story. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? Mm -hmm. I don't mean to exactly this, but yeah. the truth is, a lot of time my students who come in, of my Caucasian student, mm -hmm. are the ones that have the most trouble with this assignment. Mm -hmm. Many times they come in tears. Emotional. Yeah. They because they can find the room. Yeah. As soon as came to me, say, I don't have one and laugh that we all understand, know my room, but she is in the school nursing home that she can't talk right now. I don't know if they excuse to me. Uh -huh. Oh, but I have that common reaction from this assignment from certain group. Yeah. And I said, Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Then the monster will come with the long yeah. assignment, <laughs> the world for longest book. They were learning about the sixth generation. Right. They were learning about the whole tree. Right, right, right. Oh, the whole tree. The whole and they would go back to the king of print to give the largest print to bring to me. Yeah. And say, Here's my assignment. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at it and say, wow. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah, big, big difference. I have to say, when I took my first um, you know, cultural uh, sociology class, mm -hmm. you know, we read from MSW. That was one of our assignments was to do research and to uh, interview our parents and to talk to people and and you're right a lot of people who had a caucasian white background had a huge struggle about mm -hmm. where they really came yeah. from but the minorities like uh, african-american students Hispanic wow. students asian students they, they go straight yeah, right. go straight to mom and dad to right. grandma and grandpa 
and they would say, we were born and we live in this village, we travel from here, this is where we were, and it's, it's a timeline, you could build it, and like you said, they could build a whole family tree. But for um, some of the uh, American white kids or the students, they would have to say, well, I have to go online and put my name and maybe draw some blood and try to figure out who I am. So, no, that, that's actually very true. Um, on another note, I want to I want to ask you, in your opinion, what is the significance of for you having a bachelor's and master's degree? Because I know that some some kids nowadays or young adults might say, "Well, I'm not really sure if I want to go to school. I don't really know how important that is." Because you know, these days um, you can be rich by being a YouTuber now, right? In social media. So what do you think, in your opinion, is the significance of going to get a bachelor's and master's degree? What's going to help a person, you know, uh, with I their think, life? I, I think when I, in, in my time, when I grew up and when I came into the education mm -hmm. system, we don't have this social network available. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any other resources to say that's a different way to earn income. Right. And, I think it's a disadvantage for me, but at a certain time, advantage that, that that made me focus on education only. Mm. I have no clue what master gonna give me, I have no clue what bachelor gonna give me, okay. but it's just something that just keep going and it will stop. I never thought that I'd be a teacher and then you don't see it because I just keep going. Yeah. And then, but the thing that happened to my experience is that when I have that degree, yeah. the door open. Mm -hmm. And I never thought of that. Yeah. Nobody told me that. Yeah. But my experience is that when I have a bachelor degree, then I call for a certain job. Mm -hmm. When I get my bad master degree, then that certain door open to me. Mm -hmm. And only happened in America. Mm -hmm. That has so many international students in college mm -hmm. who came from like Thailand, Hong Kong, China, a uh, rich country, India. And now when they graduate, they originally are international students. When they graduate, they don't want to go back to their country. Oh, because they're able to get mastered when they go back, their job will not be mastered. Mm -hmm. They know that their classmates don't get mastered from out of high school, mm -hmm. but because their parents are mailing it over there, they go back and they know that they will be under classes over there. Right. right. And they'll be taking care of right. them and sheltered by Only them. in America, the long time, that play the equal opportunity rule. Mm -hmm. That even though it's not really there, but it's only valid than any, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I, when, I, when, I, when I get to Fresno State, I don't want to have a degree yet. They want me to teach them all class. Yeah, I have no say. qualification, yeah. but because I really like mom and I, know, and I teach the mission and other things because mm -hmm. mom in church was a sponsor as the community church because my, aunt, my auntie was a mom in church. Oh. And so when I was here in Fresno, the first thing I do is that a lot of elder brothers who came to from Utah, mm -hmm. they went to Utah to take six my mom courses mm -hmm. they come to Fresno Central area mm -hmm. most of those elder brothers went to the mom from me in my garage wow. in my apartment and I used to teach those missionaries in my mom right mm -hmm. and one time I laughed so I, I laughed so hard mm -hmm. because I'm not laughing in the mission but I laughed myself because I did a conversion. So one day I asked like, the elder missionary to, to write essay in mom yeah. and he is out in English I wrote a villain in the set uh -huh. right? And I just laughed. <laughs> and they say, Why are you laughing at me? I said, I'm so sorry, I'm not laughing at you, but I'm laughing at myself. Uh -huh. I thought the reason I didn't pass my eight, uh, eight, you know, a high school test mm -hmm. because I probably broke the same way. Yeah. <laughs> in English. But I, I, I probably broke the same English learner writing something right, 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 right. extremely funny. Right, like the way that the, the, the way, mom. Right, right, right. And so I'll be able to make that comparison so yeah. they can understand me. And so I think because that, uh, I think that it, it's, it's a really crucial mm -hmm. for you to really find out who you are, what are you doing. Mm -hmm. And I think somehow I have that inner drive for learning education, even though I have no clue what social work is. Yeah. I go for social work. <laughs> Because, like I said, this made you fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That everything what I did in the community, everything I did at home, I help us. I you were second parent. Yeah. I became second parent for my sibling because my mom and dad always work on the farm. It allows I to take care. I remember 
uh, as young as I can stand for four hours, so my mom had to tie the baby, my brother in my back, tie me and my baby to the tree so I don't fall. Oh. Wait for four hours for she to come back for one to take the baby out of my back, right? And I remember when she came to be out of my back, the, the, the script was so deep to my skin that I had to go, oh, you know, because now my shirt can go into my skin, so I had to pull it out. And that kind of thing. And so I think because part of my struggle in a very early age, that all that I experienced mm -hmm. became a learning lesson mm -hmm. that it helped me to challenge me through obstacles that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and so so you yeah. feel that all the education you've gotten basically opened these doors for you, even though you didn't even know. No, I that's so know important. Why that's I so know. important is that yes. sometimes these majors that we take and we think we know right. who we are, it, it, sometimes we don't know until the doors open no. at that time. So that's so interesting. And that's what American, I always, I wrote a poetry person, so I took poetry like the way Americans say, there is where there is way. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it was for me. I have no clue, but I just keep going. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for sharing that. That's, you know, that's an amazing uh, story to tell about your education, um, you know, journey. Um, but I want to go, I want to go before we get that, I want yeah. to go to one point earlier you yeah. talked about. I focus so much on education that I totally out of my community, right. except my, my immediate family that I took my sibling with me. Mm -hmm. But all of what I did teach at Francis State, yeah. right? Because I teach mom. Mm -hmm. Every trouble that we have the mom community, like early marriage, wedding problem, funeral problem, shaman problem, yeah. and the news wants to get somebody in for a while to, 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 to interview for that. Right. They are called the University Communication Office, mm -hmm. and you have a mom program, can I tell a mom professor? They always come to me. Oh, yes. Right? And they treat me, they call me a mom culture expert, yeah. which I know nothing about mom. Right? <laughs> because now I teach mom culture, I teach mom language, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So they came to me. I went in front of the camera, mm -hmm. camera's rolling, mm -hmm. like, why does why your mom sell the dog? Mm -hmm. I said, no, we don't sell the dog. Mm -hmm. What, that 8,000, that 10,000, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> because I don't know yet. <laughs> you know, you know, well, because they want me to translate. Mm -hmm. Now I come back to study, I come back to my elderly. It's a low, not a while. And then to really say, so what's the more way in Christ? The second thing you know, I said, yeah, I can put something down in English, like, not totally wrong in English yeah, translation. Yes, yes. And not that we thought, no, that's even more worse. Yeah, yeah. Like a bright price, right? The bright price book. I said, that's totally wrong translation. Mm -hmm. Because the Western would take that in wrong. Yeah, they would think you're selling it. Right, right, right. And, and, and it's not selling it. It's not. Yeah, and yeah. So, so then, because of that, I immersed myself through media system. That made me come back to one more culture. Uh -huh. So in 2000, I said to myself, I said, well, I came back, the elderly couldn't teach me. Mm -hmm. I wrote a grant to Sacramento, uh, mm -hmm. and they, they got me into Ujari, the Binding and Kaiser Foundation. Mm -hmm. So they sponsored me to teach a mom, to, to have somebody to teach a mom class. Mm -hmm. So then I have a mom master. Who wow. are going on to teach mom classes? Wow. The culture class that I want. So 2002 yeah, to yeah. 2000, 2002 to 2004, mm -hmm. uh, no 2003, no 2000 to 2003, two yeah. years. Yeah. I complete one course with the mom master oh. about wedding, funeral, who please, so calling, the bailout, all that. It took me two years wow. every Sunday where I have class. Mm -hmm. And within my own BIPP family, I took 19 other women. Mm -hmm. And when we graduated, guess what? Mm -hmm. Only three of us that can be found in the community. Wow. The rest couldn't. Yeah. Because it requires so much ability, yes. so much of passion, yes. so much of sacrifice time yes. and everything. Yeah. And then I found out the differences between the different Hmong region, Hmong family, Hmong, Hmong. Then I, I, I renewed the grant. And then I took and I, I asked another master, Sifu Media, mm -hmm. to also teach us. And now I have 39 students in my class. Wow. And then so now I have 50 at the end of the class. Mm -hmm. And then when we graduate, we have to hire the biggest cohort separate between three Sifu, three wow. masters, Sifu Media, Sifu Tsipa, and Sifu Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have like a 85 graduates together wow. in Fresno. That That's was today. 
at the uh, at the elementary school. Wow. But once again, you get that 85 graduate, the mom, the people that were able to show the community continue, now I probably have only like a five. Five. Um, that are able to be mastering this whole yeah. masterpieces to do video, yeah. to do all that. I was gonna say that this is the next part of the, the, the interview towards the end here is that you know, I want to just make sure that everybody knows that you've dedicated over 20 years along with your teaching at the college level, at Fresno State in the social work department, that you've dedicated many hours outside of your classroom to teaching, I'm going to, I'm going to name it off because I saw it in, in the article, cultural competency training, cultural, culturally appropriate health care, mm -hmm. burial practices, child abuse prevention, mm -hmm. human rights issues, and you lead cultural practices and shower ritual funerals. So I'm thinking to myself, like, oh my goodness, it, it's already like a full-time job, being what? a father, a husband, a, mm -hmm. a son-in-law, you know, a son, a professor mm -hmm. uh, of, of social work, and, and, and it doesn't end. And, and in the legal <laughs> case, it's a public case, the legal case, uh -huh. the outdoor CPS case, when I was doing my internship at Fresno County, that process got involved into that particular case, cancer, legal case, oh. because international outbursts yes. and I got involved in that case, I fought that case, oh. I, I feel that the system wrongly uh, uh, treat the mom family, oh. which is the Willie Lowe's case become one of my public case mm -hmm. that I got invited to Thailand to present, to present another healthcare model in, mm -hmm. in California, mm -hmm. mom healthcare in California model to Thailand because in Thailand, the mm -hmm. Moro family, the King family, gave many projects to the Hydra people, mm -hmm. but they got wrongfully uh, used. Right, and, right. and the Hydra the Hydra people, not only Mom, but the Kalian, the Mom, all that, mm -hmm. did not get you know treatment appropriately. Yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of cases that I got invited to, if you look at more advocate cases, mm -hmm. become uh, intervened for, for advocacy. Yeah. And so I got invited to Thailand. I got invited to China because part of what I do in the Hmong community right, right, that right. inspired China. Yeah. Hmong leaders to invite me in 2010 to go to China. And they went to one, uh, along with me, mm -hmm. the differences between 200 years that we sat with. Mm -hmm. So where that we have, that's get connect with them. Yeah. And so we have that particular. And then I used to be the trainer for UC San Francisco medical student residency. Oh. Because UC San Francisco Residency region is in Central Valley. Mm -hmm. So Which they are right, all right. 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 So, so they come and I will be the one that trains shaman his and mm -hmm. So I will have a medical residency look at <laughs> so what shaman who's small. <laughs> when one the book, you know, when spirit casually you fall, yeah. shaman to me is so powerful over right doctor's suggestion. I said, no, 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 they are not. <laughs> they are just a spiritual healer. Yeah. Yeah. And to the point that we make a training for uh, together for doctor and shaman to train together. Wow. And so the healthy house was set. Before a healthy house actually became a healthy house, it was a Barbara. That over Barbara was pretty much the lady that was trying to put that healthy house together. Yeah. And we were together with the Lilo's case mm -hmm. because the Lilo's case became one of the culture comfort point. Right. And then the shaman came mm -hmm. that uh, they uh, got the shaman into court. And and going to prosecute the shaman case. Mm -hmm. So I involved into some of those cultural diversity mm -hmm. cases that wow. are great in France now that kind of set me because every time you involve a new media. Mm -hmm. So one day in the Lilo's case, I got a phone call, my, my uh, office of once got a phone call from Dr. Field mm -hmm. office, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Field that the, the, the Dr. Field show that Yes, Dr. Phil, the TV yeah, show yeah, Dr. Phil, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's Backstage manager called my office, my friends and they say, we, Dr. Phil want to invite me to, 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 to his show, yeah. talk about Kirsch, because he had a client that believed that she, he got courage by his girlfriend on Tuesday. So every Tuesday thing happened to him. And we heard me talk about in the funeral case yeah. that in, in Fresno that I maybe the monk shaman can cure, uh, can cure, cure, the curse. cure the curse. Right. Uh, and honestly, yes, in a certain way. Yeah. But monk shaman cannot do cure right away. 
Let's say if that patient did nothing wrong, then he shouldn't be here. But if he did something wrong that the claim yeah. occurs, yeah. then he had to pay some other part Right, he has to pay that debt. But Dr. Phil Klein, it's Hispanic, and my culture, it's a mom. Uh -huh. So I don't want to go on TV and say, uh -huh. pretend like I'm the expert on the Hispanic culture. Yes, yeah. It's he very need to different. Find out, he needs to find out somebody in Dr. Phil Klein. That's very true. And not only that, the Lilo's case at the time, no, no, the food, the signature mm -hmm. case at the time, still active. So by yeah. law, legally advice, I cannot come to the show. And so my office was so bad, my office was like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a great opportunity to go on Dr. Phil's, um, you know, show. But I mean, you're right; is that it's not in your scope of practice, right? right? When you are so speaking, I have to break your yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it out, absolutely. Out, that we you can't, you can't, you can't be <laughs> in one culture, ethnic group, and right, speak right, for right, another. Right. It definitely will not work. Right. So, the last couple of questions here is: in the next few years, what do you hope to accomplish um, in the community, if not? Uh, in, in, in you know, earlier, earlier you were mentioned about your dad legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think any, any, I'm not considered myself as a scholar or whatever, but mm -hmm. I think what I did in my life, mm -hmm. in, in my daily now in the Hmong community, have a certain level inspired to either the elder or the younger generation. Because wherever I go, mom people came to me and say, Oh, you are that guy! <laughs> I learned something from you, I picked up something from you. Yeah. So it can give me the inspiration that whatever I did out there have a certain impact into our generation. Yes. Particularly the mom culture piece. Mm -hmm. Education, we have the whole aspect system as education system in America okay. that the kids can get from them. Mm -hmm. But I think <coughs> to maintain who you are, mm -hmm. and my goal is how could I live a legacy that is preservable, durable, to help the long future generation to come mm -hmm. to really find out who they are mm -hmm. before they move to fall. Right. <coughs> and so that to fall to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. And so my thought is now I'm talking about that. Mm -hmm. The uh, I think that. A month ago, yeah. the mom, mom heritage organization in Wisconsin asked me to do a presentation of the mom view. And that presentation inspired me you mm. online, we do online work for a conference right. to create a mom class. Mm -hmm. So now they want me to teach an online mom culture class, which yes. is be that I said that yeah. I, I did that send that to you. Yes, right? you did, you did. So now that we just go, I think that they are looking for like a 16 or under 20 student. Wow. Now the registration gets way over. Right, right. And so now we're going to have to, my assistant and I are going to have to restructure that class to, yes. to, to meet the demand of the registered, the pre registered. Wow. So then my point is, I told them, I said, my goal, what I want to do mm -hmm. is to help the younger generation to find out who they are. And to find out some supplement for them before my generation is gone, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to be mom. Right. Out of the word, I want to do those catered, those like uh, YouTube, YouTube yeah. services, yeah, yeah, or Facebook say, services. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, uh, if you're gonna go right by the only the line with the funeral, mm -hmm. and you are your husband, let's say, or you are your partner gonna go to have the mom. Oh, would you go to the table? I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. They can go 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 see the yard yeah, and just pull that out and really, really quick. That short sentence, I can go right. and go find me the wrong look at the children. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Uh -huh. And I want to build that confidence for the moment. Right. I want to build that difficulty, mm -hmm. uh, take that away from the moment yeah. so they can feel mom again, mm -hmm. so that they can be mom, so they never be afraid to be mom. Yeah. Either mom man or mom woman, mom boy, or mom girl, a new generation, yeah. so that they can confident say, okay, we can get that from Tizubi, yeah. and then we can go, and then I can watch out, mm -hmm. I can throw the money in the nation, and try to share, yeah. or you know, if they do this, I can respond. And I really try, I still trying to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And with the younger generation like yourself, yeah. like a uh, uh, Puta in Wisconsin, yeah. and okay. But then mm -hmm. many other people class over there that 
with the many of your young generation can assist me mm -hmm. to connect with your younger generation. Yes. I can do anything that to 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 to, to let the legacy for the younger mom. Absolutely. Because my 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 my, my afraid is what I scared the most is you are in your children's generation mm -hmm. cannot find any place to replace me mm -hmm. for their mom and identity right, right. when our generation is gone. Yeah. Because we cannot streamline or adapt the mom culture, the four five thousand year tradition to your application. Mm -hmm. And you have no application. Mm -hmm. And you're just gonna be eat it here or you're gonna just meet somebody out right. or convert to other denomination that you find convenient. Yes. So I'm gonna work I think that that's what my struggle trying to figure out a way how to let the legacy of the most easy <laughs> to use more culture to your own benefit. Yes. Own I think that's a genius and a wonderful idea for those of you who don't uh, know or like myself who don't have the tools or right, the skills or the language right. to like behind um, pop a little, um, Right. Or the you know right. Um, right. or the talk of you 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 name it to me. Because you know, I think some of us who uh are kinda of halfway, you know, we kinda of know, we kinda of don't, but there's the but like you said, there's a language, there's verbiage that we have to learn in order to go. Because if Richie Samu or Richie Samu Haya even discuss about this subject, we're gonna look funny, bullish. And and so I think that's so important that you can uh, you want to create that for right. the next generations to come. So there's a I call it like the one oh one crash course for right, right, right. or the mom culture for dummies. <laughs> or and you then, know or just 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 something. And then the reason you know? <laughs> the reason I feel that is I've been teaching mom culture class in the last mm -hmm. twenty years. Mm -hmm. I mean and then so what happened is I I have students in my class who are medical doctor who are city council, who are principal, who are sheriff officer, who are police officer, very professional. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to wrong class, I ask you, okay, uh, let's practice this. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the wrong family, listen, wait, they do a visa, right? <laughs> and they got check out and you go, oh, I have a family, what's in there? Let's see that you can tell me, you can tell me, you can tell me, you can tell and then I have to demonstrate it to him. It's in the doctor. So, guess what? When they cross it, wow! Can't get it done. And the question to me, they say, the question to me, they say, B. Yeah. They just blow my blood in me. I can't even hold my breath. I'm losing the taste. And I can't even move my foot. Blow my mouth. So what's wrong with that? If I had the opportunity, I'm not I'm not playing that one yet. But I had the opportunity to observe. And I know that it's because the it's the basic thing that you lack the basic education. You lack the basic education. Just like coming to the right. Yeah, you gotta learn your basic ABCs, you gotta learn your basic confidence. So to be to be able to practice that. So I can show my student, I say, don't afraid, don't worry. Because you don't get the basic, that's when you're so scared. Mm -hmm. And you're so afraid. Yeah. But when I teach you the basic, it's just one basic. The mom now you look at this law. Yeah. But when I teach you how to cut and paste mm -hmm. and copy and paste, yeah. that's it. And they are so happy with me, they stay with me in two, three months, they say, I learn now. Yeah. I confident now. Yeah. I can do now. I add that to my professionalism. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I, I feel cool. Yeah. Now I can hear. Yeah. Now I can see what I'm walking the one way in the middle of heaven. I can tell where they at right now. So I can hear now. I can see now. I can understand now. I feel myself important now. Yeah. And I want all of you, I want all of my younger generation to do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, and, but just connect with me. Give me a time. Yeah. I can teach you kind of pace. And when you get that down, <laughs> you can start the environment for you. Among nest leaders, yeah, yeah, and you'll be among nest the best parent that you can be. Absolutely. Right? And so, thank you, thank you, Professor B. So I know that our time is coming up. So our last question for this evening with Professor B is, um, what are your words of advice? Your last words of advice tonight, today, 
uh, or encouragement or inspiration for those who are watching, those who you know, either want to pursue higher education or learn more about the culture. What are some words of encouragement and advice and inspiration that you would like to share with our you know, viewers and community today? I think for me, based on my strong word experience, based on what I'm at today, I think that, and I, I feel that it, it worked for me, it, it can be worked for many other people. Mm -hmm. I think the knowledge, that means mainstream or long, right. or who you are, your own family, knowledge, and, and awareness, mm -hmm. and skills, mm -hmm. and all these three things, is the key to find your own treasure mm -hmm. that you will satisfy in your life. So knowledge and education, we're talking about BA, master, doctor, whatever you can get, that's mm -hmm. good for you. Knowledge of your own culture, your own identity, who you are, your own family circle, don't, don't burn the bridge there. Mm -hmm. And I think be aware of who you are, mm -hmm. in your parent, in your role, in your remember. Uh, the, the the movie Mulan <laughs> when when Mulan trying to steal his father's soul and trying to replace him because he she knew well she tried to help uh, his father's soul but his father coming in took the soul from Mulan and told Mulan in the room said I know who I am but do you know who you are mm -hmm. he talked about the cultural context and the gender context and the war zone yeah. that Mulan had to face out there. And so I think all this if you can have some of that passion and, and understand some of this nature, mm -hmm. then I think that you, you will be satisfied in your life. Mm -hmm. So I think knowledge, awareness, and skills. And then have that wrap up around yourself and make sure that you know who you are. That's number one. When you know who you are, you can love other person. Yeah. I think that culture of competency theory really play out that. If you don't know who you are, it's really hard for you to say, I love you on the other person. Mm -hmm. Because now you are empty. And so that play out a lot quite. So I think that I really appreciate for me tonight. Oh, that I, I am I was waiting for this long time to, 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 to talk to her, to yes. meet all you guys. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate for what you do. Thank and you. I think that what you do it's inspired many generations to come. I sure and not so. only that because of me, but because of many people that you actually spend time to interview them. Mm -hmm. So each of us are magic with somebody. And in, 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 in teaching, we have some concept called money man. Mm -hmm. Until you find your money man, your, your mentor, mm -hmm. that who looks like you, who understands you, that who you understand, mm -hmm. then that person can be your mentor in you know, a very far away. Yes. Thank you so much, Professor B. Thank you, Uncle B. You know, I just want to say, you know what, um, you know, this is how we learn, this is how we preserve our culture. Uh, so like you said, uh, so we can continue to know who we are. And I just want to say to everybody who has been watching Project Inspire and also who's been supporting, I want you guys to continue to reach out to those like Professor B. Um, you can look him up. I just go on Google and I found articles and um, he's available on the faculty site at Fresno State. So I know his email is available there. If you have any questions or concerns, or just you know, any questions in general, feel free to contact us and message us, and we'll be happy to you know talk to you guys. So thank you so much. Or, or if you want to follow me with Facebook and right. with YouTube, you can just go Google "Be a Culture Class." Yeah. A lot of people. Who, I, I didn't really know, I don't know how, <laughs> but you can see people. Uh, yeah, go on, don't you die? Because I know they want to. <laughs> You know, it's other people who report me publicly and they post it. So you can go follow something in there. Hopefully, that will inspire you in many ways too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mookie. Well, thanks yeah. you guys. Have a good night and happy Sunday to all of you. Be safe. You may.